All right. So Array is set up kind of like a website with the URL, just to go over that part of it. The Mary Greeley Foundation .com spelled out is, is your handle or your URL that you can share and use on any device to bring up the sign in. So not only on the touch screen, but you can share it to someone on a tablet, a phone, even their computer at a different location. A great tool if there are donors or people uh, outside the state or in, don't, can't travel to see the display, you can share it and they can bring it up and touch through this just and interact with it the same way they would on the screen. Okay, that's great. So it's, it's a public kind of site uh, that is live. So then anytime you want to view it, you just spell it the Mary Greeley Foundation .com. Then to access, which I'll give you login credentials, you just put at the end slash login. And we're on the cloud, so everything is at, you can access at home, on your phone, which is a little harder to do some of the editing, but you can get in to it remotely from anywhere by putting this slash login. And that will take you to our login screen. You'll have the credentials and sign in. And I actually have um, Andrea's sign-in information, so okay. I was able to get in. Oh, perfect. And if you're on if you're on her, then you can get in, and that's what we'll cover here today, how to get in and change things. This is yeah. a main dashboard, so when you enter the site, it, it'll show you, come up and, and kind of do an overview of things going on. Uh, this image here is what's currently playing on your screen. This is your presentation. We play a presentation, one presentation at a time, the same content to as many screens as you want. So if you had another need for another screen, you wouldn't have to pay any more for a subscription or that we are playing on a new device. There's no fees that way. It would just broadcast to two devices or three devices. Uh, so that's included in the subscription. That's our pricing model. And so that shows what's being played you can design as many presentations as you want moving forward. Say there is a big holiday event you wanted just to have on your screen and flip it and totally change it and remove all the content on it. That's then done in a schedule and you pick which presentation you want to run and you could go back and forth between as many presentations as you set up or design. Uh, it does show you your URL down here that you can share and it shows you your donor wall current it's online. It was updated an hour ago. I was in here just making sure everything was updated. And then also your latest viewers. So this is in Cedar Rapids when I was in there today, an hour ago, two hours ago. Uh, sometimes it's shared or brought up here to, to show people. But this would be an easy way if you were to share it in the newsletter, you can actually see all the different viewers that if it was a success or not that came in and actually looked at the the site and, and even further wow, how far in and they clicked and what they did or how long they spent on it. So it gives you some tools that way to show to to show success. So that's the overview. I'm going to work my way on the top right. There's our, our areas within the array that you access for components and things to do. Uh, the first part is management on the right. We'll come in there and this is the users you talked about you had access to. In the users it should refresh here, but it will come up with our current users. There they are. And uh, this could be where you can add. Mercedes, it looks like, is already in here too as an admin. So that's a simple new user. Put in their a name, give them, uh, the, put in their email, a password, then give them a role. Viewer. Uh, won't apply in your site because your site is public, but you can make your your site private that you don't want anyone to be have access. The only time they can have access is if they have a password. So this is where you would set the viewer password and access up. Manager gives edit, editing rights without really changing any of the structure or the adding new subscriptions to your page. And an admin gives the full uh, rights to do anything and add 10 subscriptions or move things around and really uh, adjust your account. One. Could you could you have content some content that's private and some content that's public? No, it's an overall that you, that one. It's kind of like a channel being sent out, so there's no way to to hide part of that channel. They're just uh, okay. sinking into the one. 
Okay. What would your, your questionnaire for viewers to see or not to when they? Yeah, so I was just thinking like if we had content we only wanted our board members to see, could we, and then they could have a subscription to part, so we could have some just something private. Yeah. Like only no. board members or something. No, there's no like. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, nothing inside that you can. It's kind of like the one, one page type of uh, scenario there. So <laughs> then, most importantly, at the end, if you're ready to make sure you do click active, that is one thing we have to have there to activate them, turn it on, and you add the user, and they'll populate. Okay. From here, you can edit them, disable them, and do anything you want. Any questions for kind of user management? I think that's kind of straightforward. Yeah, that's good. Um, one part in the top right corner here, this is your channel subscription account. If you click on that, you can um, create and manage your channels. It shows you your one channel. If you had a second need for different content to be displayed at different screens, that's when you'd have to purchase a, a new subscription for each location you want to have different. That's total different content. With our touchscreen interactive, it doesn't matter. It's not like the, the the content is different on different pages, but if you wanted to have that whole presentation, something in there, say that foundation page you talked about, just to be displayed and, and get rid of anything else and have that on the screen, then that is where you would have to apply a new channel, a new subscription. Okay, and how much would an additional subscription cost? That's the, it's a sixty nine fifty a month. And how, what, like if we wanted to do a digital screen, how, how much would that cost to get like a whole other screen out there? And okay. Um, did you hear Mercedes? Yes, I did. So okay. to, to add a screen, the there is the cost you you'll have for adding a digital touchscreen is the actual size of a touchscreen and a commercial okay. type use case scenario. The uh, touchscreen itself is for the commercial. I believe in that two to $2,000 range to $3,000 range and it comes with its warranty is meant to be running all the time it has all the uh, uh, touch points and all the activation that way but that, that's something you can have your uh, facilities look into if there's someone there that does pricing and buying and, and we, we do recommend an ELO brand a touch screen that we've had great su success with and then the device itself would be a Chrome uh, box device, which is a $250 device that would then power and run our software, so to say, onto that touch screen and make it all work together. Okay, thanks. If it would, yeah, if it was, if it was a TV scenario, like you could put the home, it would be very, like if you were just to put that home screen, so it's not an interactive, but that home page could play. Some uh, clients do that. You can buy any type you know a, a screen these days a 42 inch screen or a 52 inch screen uh pretty affordable with that same device or even a lower end device since it's not touch and have that one screen type effect playing you get your messaging just for the home page type of piece and then on the display they touch to go inside it so there's some tools there And, and maybe if that's something you wanted to pursue to have that kind of one subscription that kind of can do both things, we can redesign uh, that homepage to be more of that uh, effective grabber at the beginning, but then have a, you know, an access to enter and then they get to a menu page and get through it on your, on your foundation wall. Right. Okay. Okay. That's good to know about yeah, and have to think about. Ponder. Yep. Yeah. Again, we have this other place that it would be nice to just have those donors listed and whatnot on something digital as opposed to right now it's like a hard set wall. Oh, <laughs> you know, sure, like a different use case, yeah. Yeah, we print out paper more than once a quarter or something like that. Sure. And then uh, moving over, so along the top we have analytics. This is almost like a website. It's, it's live in the cloud, so we're able to track users and touch points so you can uh, 
get inside here and set up all your users and viewers. And it shows locations to uh, where people are looking at your pages. So what's an event? Uh, like in the analytics? Yeah, the event is each time someone comes up to it, it's kind of like a session that they've clicked. It's a new timed out. So it knows it's kind of a new viewer. Someone Someone's walked away. Another person has come up and it's going to track their walkthroughs and what they've done or where they've gone. Okay. So that's like physically standing in front of it? Yeah, as they're touching through, yeah, you can follow where okay. they're going or how far. It's, it's been pretty effective for some clients that they've realized they've had <clears throat> way too much content, 10 pages deep that have never been looked at. So then, and they want, if they want that content to look at, then they're like, okay, we want to pull that out into this page. Usually we give a rule of thumb, three pages deep, you know, click once, click twice, click three times is, is about as far as people really want to get on a standing kiosk if there's other pages. So each page should only go three deep. Uh, so right now on your page, there's five I believe buttons each one there's one page and a couple then there's three three pages within so so yours your display right now is currently kind of optimized well well that's good yay for us yeah so that's analytics we can pull and and do more there uh you can data spinning to calculate here and we'll move to devices showing you uh your device currently you have one device added to this description. So when, if you were talking about adding a new device, a new screen, we set up the box or you can set up, have the box set up with our little uh, app on it. You turn the box on and it will display a four digit code. You come in here to add device. You put the four digit code in here, hit add device, and it simply will sync and send all the right content to that screen, locks it down and can, turns it into a kiosk that is secure and ready to roll with your only your content. So a very slick little way to, to get them synced and remotely. You can imagine if you had displays all over the country, how easy that and effective that would be for you would just call someone, turn on a screen and read, read you the code and you can then create your network. Then we'll jump to schedules along the top. Currently we're running one big schedule all the time. If you do want to create that, we'll get into the next another presentation. Then you would click in here on the edit button. And right now we're a presentation name we're running is called Foundation Wall. If we had another presentation, we click down, select it, and then hit update and all the screens would instantly switch to that new presentation. Okay, and, we, and you can have a start and end time and they just go back and forth between the two. Like during our, our gala events, you know, we can have that, you know, a different thing and have it set, set yeah that day yeah and you could pre-do it all so that you design that out what do you want it to say and then you come in here on this day of the event and add it in between here that's how that would work and then you'd so you do a schedule okay. we uh, our schedule does not get down into the uh, per second per place a lot of advertising which won't, I don't think is in your needs advertising type scenarios, they want to know it every time one ad is played and schedule things that, to that specific time and, and slot and give you that c full control of like 100 different play times at this many days a week type of thing. So we, we don't do that. We're more of just this, put a schedule in for your presentation. Okay. So the long and last part about the top is our content. This is where a lot of your daily uh, editing changes and updates will happen. Under the content tab, we have presentations, media library, slideshow, and listies. Listies is a widget tool we have developed to handle li large listings of spreadsheet type applications. So you have a large list of a thousand donors. This is where you would uh, bring it in as a list and it would ha what it does is it handles that list onto multiple pages so you're not having to flow content onto 
10 digital pages. And if you have one name that changes within reflow, all the others, that's very time consuming. The, the widget will, will handle that flow for you. And all you need to do is update an Excel sheet that has a, in an order. I believe in originally we had set these up as listees, but in the end, because the, the counts are so sh small and short, it's just been text blocks added with the names typed in to the pages. Okay. So if we wanted to have a list of every donor for the year, yep. we could download all the every donor in the fiscal year 2017 onto an Excel spreadsheet and just upload it. Yes. That Excel would just have to have the top cell column named name and AME, and then it, it'll populate that name in that column. So however you want that to appear, first name, last name, and whatever order has to be in the right, correct order from top down, saved out. Um, then you save that out, and then here you would have this, what we would call your annual or giving list. You just come into this location without ever entering the actual page, and you would edit that Excel, you go choose a new file, navigate on into your computer that Excel sheet, and hit choose file, and then it reloads and reflows it all back in instantly. Okay. So you just can you open one of like can you can you open the board list for us so we can just see what it looks like? Yeah. Because it needs to, that needs to be edited. So would it should we? go in and edit this document or should we upload a new document well that would be once we get into your page i i think originally we started this way and i'm not sure where it ended up but yes it could be done either way i would say this is the simpler way to if it's changing often and, and enough that it reflows without someone to have any get in and and typeset within the editor uh, or if it's just one name that's changed once a year, they can go and copy and paste a new name inside the editor, and I'll show you how that happens. Usually, a list ease isn't used for, you know, under 50 names type, if you can get it on a page. It's more or less handles the, the multiple page type navigation. So it puts, like, navigation on the bottom and for you, and you click through almost like uh, uh, it flips through pages. It sets up pages for you and handles all that content. Okay. Sponsors, let's see. What we can do is we can throw it in. I can show you on the sponsors page how it would work and we can see the difference. But um, so, yeah, that a lot of times it comes down to how you want to handle content. We can have different ways to handle content from typing it in a, a list like this. We can integrate Google slideshows or Google Sheets, things like that too. So, so that's listies. It sounds like you may have a reason to use it in the future. Maybe if we set up a big page of your your uh, annual giving or yeah, and, okay. And even and maybe you can. I'm just thinking out loud, but you know we're halfway through the fiscal year. We've got on our donor wall. We have our societies that we update once a year but even if you know every day that we get a new donation in we could go add it yeah you could you could easily like, handle that daily list? yeah okay but then would that be on this list or would that be a different thing you would so you'd probably want to keep this ongoing excel sheet or somewhere that is being updated when that gets updated you save it and you'd log in here and hit edit and just re resync it, re-click it back on there, re-put the new one in. Okay. So you just come in, log in, come down to listies, you know, you've done, you would name this annual lists, and you go to edit, you hit your choose file and go select that file again, wherever you have it on your drive, a Google yeah, Drive. Override it. Yeah, it just reflows it. And then it's okay. instantly pushed to your screens. So you can do all your societies on here if you wanted to have those pages too. Okay. Which is, and then that could give you more legs for that sharing and, and tell people you're live and you're up and you're, 
you know, made a donation, check us out. It'd be a way to get them to your site and maybe create some uh, yeah. viewing that way. So that's listies. Next is slideshows. Within your presentation, we have two slideshows. On the slideshows, so at the home page, we have this revolving slideshow on the top, the square with three slides. And on, uh, I believe, expectations page, we have a revolving slideshow at the top. So this is one of our widgets we'll bring in, and I, we'll get into how to do that, but I want to explain how it works. So in our manager, under content, if you want to change one of those slideshows, so, so just to update those photos, you just come into here, and this is kind of this is acting like a folder that that widget is just pulling from. Whatever's inside this folder, that's what it's going to put in the in that space. So beyond expectations, we have all these photos that it cycles through. If you don't, and that that okay. So how do I know where if I add new pictures? How do I know where it's going to? when it's live uh, so you're desi you're designated these folders if we uh, the next the next one will be the media gallery but say you okay. say you had a full you had a new photo you wanted to put in beyond expectations page we would hit the slides in here and up here we have add a slide in this page we can either if it's already been brought into your media gallery that's you can do that beforehand or you can simply add media Navigate to where this file, this photo has been saved. And that could be in your drive, Google Drive, you can set up on your computer in a folder. And you would choose that. And you can even you can even search. Uh, I don't know what, snowflakes. Since it's not. So we want snowflakes. When you say this is a picture that you wanted in there, select select it, and Snowflake is now inside your slideshow, and it's pulling live and it's feeding it currently on okay. on your display right now. So I'll just delete it. So, but, a, so the name of the slideshow that that isn't. Those are the two places on the digital wall that <coughs> our slides show up. Yep. So we can't add any, we would never add a name. A name of? Right? <laughs> like, I was I was confused with what, what the name is. So the name is either the homepage name, and then I can just add pictures and edit the pictures that are going to show on the homepage, or there's the Beyond Expectations page. Yeah, that's the name of the, think of it the name as of the slideshow folder. That's the Beyond okay. Expectations folder. This is the home page slide. And the, here it shows the size of the photo. Ideally, this would be the size of someone's cropping them for you, or you can crop them within Area once they're brought in. And then that would fill that space the best. So on the home page slides, we have these three slides. Within here, this so this is like your playlist. You think of it. You can move them around and then change the order. On all our objects you bring in or see, you'll see a lot of these gearboxes. The X is delete, and the gearbox is your options. So within each within each photo here, say you had a this is a photo, but may, maybe there was more of a text type image that's been brought in and saved out from a PDF or. Uh, a messaging thing and you wanted that to be on longer you'd simply come in here and put some timing to it 10 seconds 15 seconds and uh, and you can also change transition so the others are fading in do you want this to fade out flip or scroll in like moving in so it gives you some options for the animation of them okay. and this is basically happens to any type of slideshow image you can get in and then click on those and, and give you some control and on top of it we've also developed an area where you can actually start and end when that image plays within your uh, slideshow any any questions about the the folder itself 
the, yeah, the name isn't the text that's on the page. This is just the name of the folder that the widget is calling to. So inside the folder here, and I'll show you why that's important once we get into the editor page. So I could add, we could add more folders. Oh yeah, yeah, we can add new slideshows. If you say you had a new one coming up, say that event, you have the gala event. You know, that's coming up and you wanted to have a slideshow of the folders from that to just to happen. So you create that. We would then go in here and add all your photos, just like I was doing, select them, click them and put them in. Right. I'll add a couple because you need a few here. Yeah. So we have our two. So now we have this folder here. Then we'll jump. I'm going to just jump to the presentation because this folder hasn't been assigned to anything yet. It's just, it's, it's on the server. It's acting and it's waiting to be uh, used. The photos are, if we had a presentation, I'm going to start a new one so we don't mess ours up too much. I have, I'm kind of bouncing around doing it this way. Sorry. <laughs> Just need to double check something here. I'm just making sure the schedule's synced up when it is. So now we're getting into the editor. This is where the page layout happens, where you want to put things. I did not create the, I just quickly jumped in, so I didn't create a portrait view or landscape right now. I'm just going to show you how that widget works. So to add a slideshow, say this is this new one you wanted to switch to or a page within, you come down to our widget, a slideshow, and now we are going to your gala. We want to do trends. So now it's going to pull those three photos I put in. We want to do a scroll horizontally. We want to make people really obnoxious and have to read fast so we'll do it for the sake every two seconds and maybe we'll do that two milliseconds this is the transition so how fast that fade happens so there's all these different controls you can use or fit and fill for scaling uh, if it's interactive we can have swipe added so on the screen someone could be swiping through your touch screen if we wanted to have that and the ability to add captions if there was captions tagged on these photos once we hit OK on your screen now is you'll see the photos that we those three photos set up as a slideshow and our drag and drop features is really slick because now we can then uh, make it whatever size we want and now it's putting in the slideshow does that make sense how that slideshow folder works yeah so this is just calling to that photo Say this is set up that home page and you just have another folder folder set up you want to change it to, we would go into our home your home page in our gearbox again instead of slideshow gala. Now you've created a third one called another event. You would simply select this piece. You're changing the folder here, hit OK, and this will populate one of the other folders that we have out there. This one has a lot of fo photos in, so it's gonna have to uh, load them all up. I'm going to do this one instead. This will be faster. So, so now it'll 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 populate them in once it's loaded up. So before I jump around and do too much of the specific things, I think maybe I'll keep running through the areas and then show you how each one is applied. Sounds good. So I showed you the slideshow folder. That's where the photos are put. This can be uh, something easy for someone to update or just have the credentials go in and can 
adjust and move the photos and delete photos from in here. From here, we have a media gallery. This is where you can start bringing in your content, your videos, and different things you want to play. You simply hit add media and bring in your, your content. We do support many formats of content. Anything on the web usually is supported. PDFs, we take the first page of the PDF and it will display. And any video file we can handle, it converts, and uh, we save it all out and don't have to do any conversion for you for the displays. Our, our array knows what kind of device is being displayed, so it then accordingly sends the right kind of video format. It's not going to send a, a 4K video to a, a, a someone's phone and have them uh, have to load up you know, a, a 10 meg file. We're going to have a reduced file to play accordingly, so it's optimized that way. So that's Media Gallery. In here you can navigate previous media, delete, and the other part of it is an editing type tool. Inside here we have some editing functions where you can even crop to sizes and I think my internet's a little delayed here and do different effects. Are you still in there and live? You can see me clicking around okay? Yeah. Oh, there we go. See, uh, something is uh, chugging here. So here's, we can do different effects and add things to your page if you wanted to get in here and do some creative fun tools. It gives you kind of a tool to do more than just bring in some photos and add captions to them or f funny things if you're stylizing yeah. things. So do you put videos in here? Yep, all your media, any type of media, we'd load up a video. So if you had a video, we would just navigate to your drive, load the video, and it would start converting it. Once the video's in here, then you just have to place it, and that's within our pages, which I'll get into next. So, so the, do, you, do you keep, because on the other, you had photos in there, so do you keep photos in one and videos in the other, or do you keep everything under media? Everything is brought into the media library. Okay. The slideshow, this is just a folder that I'm putting media from our media library into. Okay. So, the, so everything goes to media. Yeah. And then you pull what you want into different folders, folders. and parts. Yeah, that, that, so at, when I went to add slide here, we can add a slide. It's going to take me right to the media gallery. If I haven't loaded it yet, then I can go in within the media gallery. I can add media. So that's where it's kind of a little confusing, but what we're doing is we're making it so you don't have to click out, then go back into the media gallery, put it in, then come back into your folder and find it. So within here, we have a shortcut. Now you can go and add the media too. So less steps for you, little confusing up front. You, you, there's a lot of, yeah, different windows and where we're at. So it's kind of uh, access points are kind of overlapping. Okay. So. And in here you have video. So a slideshow can have video. You, We can bring in a video on that slideshow. And when you do do that, you want to make sure you time out that slide. If you know the video is 30 seconds, you want to get into the slideshow here and put 30 seconds for that to display. Importantly, because when we create the uh, widget, it just assigns them all a, a regular sl time slot. And if that video isn't done after eight seconds, it's going to hop to the next image. It's not going to okay. know to play your entire video. It doesn't know the length. So a little bit of a setup if you do put a video is just that timing on it. So you can have a still image. You can have a photo. You can have a video of the event. You can then have um, a message or a PDF of a flyer that someone's created. So then I'll get into the presentations, and this is the area where you design and set up that page that you want to be displaying or working your on your on your screen. Yours is a foundation wall. If you want to create a new one, we do have a new presentation. Within here, we have templates and custom. Under templates, I have saved out your wall as a template. The current one is w wall one wall wall one template. And so this is a great way to bring it in and call it uh, update or, or anything. 
and you can bring that in to, to work on it. And then it's going to create a second one here. And then you'd schedule that to play. So inside, again, here, this navigation to access, you edit. We can then edit your, get into your foundation, which I'm going to hop to. I've already loaded it up here on the editor. So when you click on there, it'll take you in here just for saving the loading time. Um, down the left-hand side, the navigation of this editor, this is your full window editor. So any, anything in the middle is a screen you're on. Down the left side is navigation to your pages that, that we have. So anytime you touch on your screen to, to change it, it goes to a new page, almost like a website. And these are the multiple pages down the left-hand side that are within your touch screen. So if you wanted a new page, new content, that donor list we talked about, we would create a new page and add it to the bottom. Along the top, this is where you have that navigation to do that. We have a new presentation. It's a whole new one to load. Uh, or in this, we can add a page by pushing the plus button here. We can duplicate a page, and then we have the page options. What I recommend is because the navigation is all set up is that we do duplicate a page. So we'll start, say, at the bottom here, and we knew we wanted uh, another one of the a different page here. So we're going to duplicate it. And it'll populate down below. There it is. And now we can then edit this page. How our editor works, it's a drag. You see what you see, what you get. You're dragging things around. Anything has a scroll box around it. You can move things, scale it, size it to fit. That is an object and box along the top here. This is where you can have find these objects. We have a text box. That's currently what this McFarland clinic is. Uh, inside the text box, anytime you want to do an edit or change, if you double click and it kind of acts like Word, we can retype in and change our text and comments content. And then there's typical Word type functions, font sizes, uh, colors bolds and handling context that way. On all our widgets, you'll notice again this the settings tool, but then we have a style tool. So when you're within your text box, you can now even style um, a few other parts and that is say the size of the box, so you can change it. We can do the opacity, so we want that text to fade out over top of the image a bit. We can uh, also handle some of the fonts and sizing here in here. It's recommended to use that up in this toolbox to step, but we can add borders around the box if we wanted. Uh, and this is applies to any type of feet, object you bring into Araya, some styling, some shadows, and some advanced elements like rotation if we want to rotate this box. Let's see if I got all this. Okay. And there it's there it goes. So now you have see the green box around it. The opacity is down like fifty percent, so now it's fading out, and that can be done on a photograph and elements. I'm going to leave the touch button at the top and moving along the top. Then we have images and video. This then is for the images and video you want to bring on a page. It takes you back to that media gallery. We want a new image on this page of the building. We click it and insert it, and it'll come up on the screen. And everything is, you know, we're trying to find pieces and parts and elements. So we have a photo back here we no longer want. We delete it. So this is a full design capabilities here where we're setting up a, a new page. So I'm sizing it. It's in front of everything. Along the bottom for some handling and some control of all your elements. This is where you'll get into layering because we have different layers in front and behind. Uh, we have the three bars here. You can cut and copy this. So if you like this on this page, you wanted to paste it to another page, you'd copy it and simply click around and paste it to the right pages. You want that lo logo or image in that same spot. And uh, rotating and zooming within here. So I'm going to send it to 
down a layer. And now it's behind this button. I'm going to send it to the back. And now it's behind everything. So this is for the design and element, a lot like an illustrator or in design type tools. Delete the text box we just created. Along the top two, the last part about creating, there was a shadow or a box on top of a box type, type of shape to create some division. That can be in the draw, and that can be done with adding rectangles or circles. We'll do a circle for this one. Say you wanted to put an element in there or some text around it, and we want to color it and add our border, say a dotted line this time, and we're going to fill it with a new color and make it a little translucent. So now you can see it's affected with the, my dots around it. Again, any object, you can apply that style to the same steps the same way. And now we want this text box in front. So again, the layering. This is where it does get a little layering and understanding what's going on in your page could get uh, confusing. But if you select on things and bring them to the top, it'll now sit, sit in front and read better. Any questions about objects and text and images, bringing them in and what we can do with them? No. Okay. So from there, that's more of the image part of it. The next step is the widgets. These are these, those dynamic elements, the content handlers, the th things that make, that can happen on your page. For example, the first one we'll have is the date and, date and time like we have in November 30th, this counter here, we have options to do any type of formatting and it comes up on your screen. Again, it's small on your screen because it needs to be styled. On the one on the bottom, we change the, the text size and now it's larger and that would be kind of the same way we've done the bottom piece. This can be moved around and put wherever you wanted. Again, styled and handled however. So these widgets, as we move down, um, I can cover some quickly. This dynamic content, a marquee. So you had your event. You want to put event date on here or a reminder. You type in in the field here. You have directions, left or right, and the speed and how fast that comes in. This is that marquee scrolling tool kind of you'll see on signage. Uh, and now we have the ability to show some movement and some messaging that uh, will be specific. And there it is on your screen. <coughs> Moving down, uh, we do, did a, have a widget for Hebrew date for client and we've allowed access for everyone to use that. Countdown is one for an event. You'd pick the event date say the event is tomorrow or maybe next week on the 7th what this does up top it'll show you now it's six days 23 hours 59 minutes and 46 seconds away maybe that's a little too much for you and you wanted to take off the i guess the minutes get rid of the minutes and the seconds Seven days, and it'll it'll repopulate with the hours. Something it, we're running a little slow on the internet, but in the years, and then we text a uh, reminder or the event date name name here is in seven days. Uh, in the um, I don't know main conference in the main room. I'll just put. So what this does on your screen then, we'll size it in. It brings in the seven day counter. So in six days it'll come and five days it'll remove, four days, three days, two days, 
and count, do a countdown and you can handle that however we put the text in front and in behind so in the middle this dynamic content that is changing every day is that seven days you don't have to do any of that work it just happens for you I'm going to move down so we have slideshow we kind of covered that this is that slideshow area we pick the folder we have set up we can in here create a new folder and bring in photos uh, if we preset them up we can click through and change and pick which ones we have the transitions display time the transition speed so how fast that transition happens this is a millisecond so it's half a second it fades in if you want to fade in really slower you could put 2000 for two seconds Fit, fill, and some options here for gallery, captions, and swipe. We have YouTube. Currently, your video that is running is a YouTube video feed. If you We do recommend that if you do have the actual video that it's best to be placed, then you're not uh, in relying on a feed or something that can change. If that address changes, then that video is no longer available and it depends on the internet. One thing about Array, it is cached, so once it's on the device, it, it plays, it doesn't have to go get it every time. But you can just sync up a YouTube video. You put in the YouTube address on YouTube. What it does not do, it does not filter any advertising pieces like that. So if you're not the owner and in control of what advertise on that piece, and you bring a video in, it will have that advertising. It'll have the controls autoplay you want on so that it's always played. Uh, so it does not require you to touch the screen. And then within YouTube, you can also set a playlist up and sync it to do a playlist. So you can have four or five videos that you like from the internet, make that playlist. And inside Rhea, hit OK. And now we have our YouTube feed ready to go. But you would recommend not keeping it on YouTube instead actually Load. uploading it yeah then okay. then you're not in the, you're not dependent on some other things that can happen or uh, pieces and parts if you can get that video if you're in the ownership of it okay it gives a little more handling abilities and um <coughs> So then we're going to move down quickly here. So this is a lot of this is to cover like if you're going to create a new page and do things. We integrate with Google, Google Maps, Google Charts, Google Slideshows, and Google Data. Where this can account for is in Google Slideshows. We can actually, if you use a, if you're familiar with Google Slides like like PowerPoint, you can create a slideshow with five slides or six slides. Type in your text bring in a picture, make your page look, and give your message you want. And in here, you'd simply grab that URL that, that your your Google Slides is under, You uh, a few steps to get that URL, paste it inside this window, and now it's direct feed to that Google Slides account. So this is another way to do a slideshow that gives a user the ability to edit and update without having to use an InDesign or des design type tools or layout tools or even within Array to do that kind of, kind of work and it would scroll through the slides. Do you, do you, would you have any need for that type of uh, content creation? Um, well, I, our firewall doesn't really like Google very much. So I don't know, like I, I would probably use more PowerPoint. Okay. Instead of Google. Yeah, and that wouldn't slide. be synced. Okay. So, I mean, I, I'll have to just see if that's a possibility. Right. We use it as a tool. So it's a tool for a way to do the content. A lot of schools use it because they can then set up this these pages and a teacher can be given one of these pages. The admin at front handles three other pages and they can go in daily and, and do their one page and then that page and that whole presentation is pushed to the screens and they're responsible okay. for it. But what that does, it gives them a tool to actually do some of that 
creation, creating the content is always like, where does that content come from? How does it happen? In Araya, we can create a page here, but doing a slideshow revolving through, you have to have that content ready to go like an image to play through. Right. So now, that, that it, it may be. Yeah. I don't know. I'll have to so if you something we can yeah. And it's all in the cloud. So yeah, as long as you could log in, nothing's gonna happen from internally, but yeah, you access and then blocking it would be a problem. Google Charts is used for in Google Data Sheets. It's really a, a tie-in where you can create a sheet in Google and those cells. And so if you had a menu board or a, an area where you had the, the pop price is $2, you're actually just assigning a cell to pull that would, uh, let me show you here. You put a URL in the cell A1 and, and on your sheet, in Google Sheets, A1 represents your pop price. And it's two dollars. Well, say one day it changes to two dollars and ten cents. You don't have to come into a whole menu on array and change thirty-five different prices. You do your spreadsheet, and then all repopulate into the right spots on your page, redesignate it. Okay. So, kind of some tools for that content again, handling content. Uh, Twitter. Here's our Twitter. Let's uh, just show you quickly. This seems like this would be one. Um, we'll simply. Uh, There it is. Type in your handle. You know that's control that's coming from, it's not a hashtag. We do do search here. We're just doing a username. So we're only pulling what Mary Greeley is tweeting. Where you can get in trouble, we don't never recommend it, is the hashtag. So you can you can always search hospital. Anytime someone hashtags hospital, that message would come up good or bad, filtered and unfiltered. Okay. And lists, here's that tweets by Twitter list what I talked about. So you create a list of followers and it's going to pull that list of different pieces. So it, that can sometimes be handled nicely for organizations that want to not only show their stuff, maybe they're involved in uh, the foundation, say there's a foundation tweeter tweets out there that people talk or quotes, tweets and things like that. So here it seems like and then when inside everything has windows, we can always read back, come back in and, and see how we like, how it looks, how it feels, and edit things. We can turn the author off if we know it's us. If you want time on it or how old these are, turn them off or on. And how many tweets you want it to display, the last five tweets, ten tweets. Transitions. And also back here, sorry, text, media, or both. What it's hard coming in with different size of photos and media these days. It, it is a challenge to format to a screen to a size. We recommend one or the other, usually the text or the media, but it does still can handle uh, the text and media. Just try this. We'll hit OK. And now we have your Twitter feed on the page. Say that changes or you want to update again, you go back in the settings like on all our tools. You can rechange this, reflow this. So once you have something in set in place, you can always reapply some of the navigation or sync it differently to play new content. Again, we don't like the color, we can change the fonts, all that again in style. Moving down, RSS feeds. This would be like a news feed on the, if you had a feed that you wanted to do world news, uh, foundation news, if there's feeds out there you know of that are free and available, or if you had a service that gives you a uh, URL, you can then put those in and it will bring up your feeds on the page. And then website, we can directly bring in a website page uh, onto your page, it, it has limitations, but it kind of just puts it in there the best it can as it, it doesn't format or reflow things around. And HTML is used for specialty widgets or things can people can use the for the screens to talk or to do different actions. So you touch something on a screen, you can HTML it out to go order, place the order, do different things. So some controlling there. The bottom are premium widgets with listies, with weather, QR code, Google Calendar, it syncs to the calendar so it can show your calendar listing, and even a webcam. 
weather is again everything's simple really simple type in your zip code turn your forecast on or off hit okay and it'll will come up here it's just delaying again Oh, there it is. I have a lot of things on the screen without saving. One thing while you're designing, you can see I've been putting in and moving things around it where it's live on the cloud. We do recommend to always push or save a draft. And that's done in the top right corner. We can save a draft and we can save the entire piece as a new template. So we can then save it and access it again or like I did brought it, bring it in as it's a duplicate. Anytime you want to exit the editor, you hit the X button. So the other component about your pages after we've developed and built all these pieces and parts on your page that have been brought in is the touch points and how to get to page to page. So how it works is think of the pages set up along the side as we're just going to create an object or an image on the screen that will then identify which page to take it to. We click on the touch. Dialog window comes up. We want we're on page or on the home page. We want it to this button on to take us to our donors. And the text we want it to say is our donors say. We hit OK. And that can be typed or changed into anything you want. And it's small again, so we have to style it. And we can put a button around, and that's how these currently are done with the with that styling in here. We're going to add them, turn into a, something that looks like a, a button, say. And now wherever we put it on the page, and someone touches that point, it's going to jump them. We click on here. We can do follow the link. To our donors page and that's how simple it is to act add or make new touch points so two things would be to, to have that page designed like a the new bottom page this McFarland clinic we duplicated and moved around and and taken to that new page you named or an existing page you want to re-navigate them back and that would simply you can add as many touch points as you want on a page Again, if you get to a page, you want to make sure you come back. So all on top of here, we have touch points, our donors beyond. These are each a square that navigate to one of these pages. Within those pages, doesn't matter how many touch points we have, say on Greeley Awards here, we have four more touch points that are taking you to four more pages. Part is just keeping your pages named well and organized and then uh, thinking of each one as a layout and where you want them to navigate through, kind of like a website button. Any questions on creating a touch point or? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know if you would be doing much of that. It, it may, maybe some of these new donor pages, if you were to bring them in, um, <clears throat> Beyond, I don't know where they would come in. Our donors is that the page it would come in on? Yeah, right now those are our like sponsors. But I think if we had a more um, yeah, you know, if we updated it every day or once a week or something with new donations as they come in, uh, that would probably be where it would be. Yeah. So our donors maybe on here you have because you talked about these are so we can add just like we have here. I'll just so if you. I'll just copy this first. We don't have to recreate things. Yeah, we would. Um, you could have these, you know, 2017 sponsors here. Make this button like a, your sponsor button on the page. So they come into this home page about, you know, thank you for don't, any, everyone that makes this happen, blah, blah. Within here, they have, you can divide it out now sponsors, your annual giving, uh, the mileage club, and and they can click on each one, and that'll give you some a little more play and control of how to display or give them a little more impact than all on one page. Okay. 
and so within the pages, yeah. So all these currently are these are all typed in. So if you needed to make a change, and this he was no longer here, you'd either delete it or type in a new one. And that's, um, so it depends on how, again, if you wanted that listies type format, bringing in the Excel, that would, that would, uh, could make things easier. Or in here, you would have to just format the multiple pages and navigate around and find all those pages to make changes on. Okay. So on the home page, if we're thinking about like where to put a Twitter feed, we could maybe, a, adjust some of this if you'd like and, and add a content part for the Twitter feed on this page. Right now it scrolls through. One thing that we can also do is, this is playing through slides right now of photos. We can have a transparent slide put in that plays for like 30 seconds. And when it comes up, it's just see-through. So whatever's back here behind it, say that's where our Twitter is, it would, it would play. So that'd be a nice way to kind of maximize your use there and then so then after 30 seconds uh, a new image comes in and then goes back to the Twitter a new image that type of thing and this could be colored or there could be a nice image faded out colored can image you, back there can you do that right now yeah we could let me I've been I don't want to say what I've been doing hold on you don't want to say what you're doing. No, I, w I don't want to save what we've been editing here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to delete all our edits. I'll go back in. The trans it'll, It's going to take a little bit to actually make that happen. i got to bring in a transparent s slide. Um, Twitter. And I'm, not a, I'm at a hub here with a different computer that doesn't have access to all our files. But, yeah, we can we can... If that's how you'd like to handle it, we can definitely make that happen. So when, if I want to just go in and play and do kind of what you were doing, yep. but not have it go live, how do I, how do, like, how do I go in and still save it? Like say I really love something, but I want to save it, but I don't want it to go live. Do I just, that's a save. When it, on that push live button, yes. that scares me because I'm afraid if I say push live, it's going to push it live. Correct. I'm not ready to do So that in the... Um, back in the editor here, let's see if... Do we have the push live, but this drop down, that's where you have the save draft. Okay. And what's the difference between save draft and save template? So save draft will just save this point. And so when you come back into it, it'll, you'll come back to the starting point, this point where you ended. It's not live. Things okay. have been changed. Save draft will actually, or save template, will create a template that you can now open as a new presentation and change the entire piece. With this being a touch screen, that it's pretty complicated to go in, but for a lot of people, they can create their one design or template or look of their their uh, screen, save it as a template, and then now they could bring it in. Uh, let's we name it, save it as a template, and so you know, on the it's kind of like it's saved a permanent copy of this layout. So when you go into the presentations under new presentations within our folder here, we can, again, add as many presentations as you want. You can set up a holiday one, a gala one. That's where you'd bring in a template that you've saved out or start with a blank canvas. And that would be selecting a template. And we also have already pre-designed templates. So if you saw something here that would work for your gala, just for instance, and you just wanted to use this quickly. You can change the colors once you bring it in, and and everything's kind of laid out for you. All you're doing is re-linking, you know, a Twitter feed, a, a folder of photos to a new folder of photos, 
and we also have templates and this is your template your current one under my templates if you save it out i saved it as a template it's here now we can select it and bring it in and then now you can work on it change it update it and without uh re messing up or changing your current one that's the one fear you had so that could be okay. a good way to maybe handle your steps i guess always bring in this new one to, to work on once it's completed you can delete the old one and then schedule in this new one we're still playing So that was kind of a, a pretty quick run through. Uh, we're right at the hour and a hour mark here. Did, did you um, have any questions or? It's one of those things I think once you get into it and the more you do it, the editor, the creation part of it is, is almost done for you and there was a lot going on there. I also showed you how to do a lot more, maybe new ways to bring content that you talked about. And then the updating is either double clicking on some text, updating those slideshow folders, and possibly adding a few new pages, which um, can be handled either by getting in the editor and, and doing those things, or even coming back to us to maybe set up those current pages for you if you wanted. Okay. Yeah, I think I just need to play. Yeah. This is very helpful. I 